Welcome to Winer Watercolors with Jean and Jazzy. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint a blue jay step by step. Use a sheet of graphite paper to transfer your drawing. Jazzy, are you coming to help? Use a pen to go ahead and press lightly and transfer your drawing. Okay, we're ready to apply our masking fluid. I like to use little craft brushes, not my good brushes. Apply the masking everywhere you want to save some light. Light's coming from the top left. So we want to save light on the left or top branches, across the crest of the blue jay, also along the blue jay's breast, and across the top of the barbed wire. We're ready to begin painting. We'll start with our wet into wet background wash using New Gamboge Yellow, Opera, Burnt Sienna, Peacock Blue, and Cobalt Blue. Use a uh, large round brush. This is a number eight. Wet carefully all along the outside of the bird, across the top of the fence post. Come back with a three quarter inch flat and wet your entire background area. Once, once the paper's wet and shiny, you can start dropping in your color. I start with yellow first. Then I like to add pink and isolate the yellow. Make sure I border yellow everywhere with some pink. You can tip the paper up, left, right, backward, forward. You'll get some nice blends that way, which is sometimes prettier than brush strokes. Go ahead and begin adding your lightest blue, the peacock blue. I'm still using the three quarter inch flat brush at this point. And now I want to mix a bit of cobalt blue with burnt sienna, switch to a number 12 round brush, and start dropping in some grays. Everywhere that I want to really uh, call emphasis to the light that I'm going to save in the composition. And that's going to be across the breast of the bird. Uh, you want to go ahead and counterbalance that a little bit so it's not isolated everywhere. Hi Jazzy, welcome back. There's still shine on the paper. So I have time to work with this technique. And now I'm going to switch to a three quarter inch flat brush that's damp but not wet. 
and just smooth everything, blend everything. And there we go. A little tipping for a little more blend. Mix a little bit of gray and just glaze over your entire background onto dry paper. Pull that outside edge along as you go and we'll increase the value uh, contrast so the bird will pop better. Time to move on and remove our masking and soften those edges that the masking has created. I'm using a rubber cement pickup to remove the masking. You can also just use the tip of your finger. Lift all of the masking. Then I come back with a tulip brush. It's a fabric brush. And I, I uh, dip the, the brush in water so that it's damp, but not soggy wet. Move along those inside edges and uh, blot with paper toweling. Uh, this softens all those hard edges and makes them much more pleasing and uh, easier to work with. Takes a little bit of time but the result is well worth it. You have edges to soften on branches, on fence post, on barbed wire. Take some time to go ahead and soften outside edges of the bird. We want him to look soft and fluffy. Okay, we're ready to paint the branches. Go ahead and mix up a combination of burnt sienna with cobalt blue. That'll, that will make a nice uh, branch brown. And think about where the light is coming from. You're going to go ahead and use, uh, use a number four round brush and apply your brown mix down the outside right or the underside of any of the branches. To soften any of those inside edges of brown on the branches, you can uh, rinse your brush, blot it, and just gently tickle that inside edge so that brown blurries into the uh, softened white area. ready to paint the fence post and the barbed wire. I'm using a number four round brush and burnt sienna and just moving along the lower edge of the wire. Follow the contour and uh, you're basically just outlining. 
can go ahead and uh, lightly trace the top edge of the wire, but make sure you save some of that white highlight. I went ahead and softened that edge of burnt sienna with the damp number eight round brush. And now I'm just adding a little stronger brown for more definition. Moving into the fence post, mix up some gray. And first I'm developing the beam that supports the post. Softening with a damp brush. Adding a little definition to give it the feel of wood. Pressing the round bristles so they fan out to create texture. Doing the same textured application on the post and following the uh, contour lines. I'm being mindful of the direction of light, increasing the value on the right hand side of the post to give it more dimension. Strengthening the value on that right hand side, adding a few more lines for definition. The last thing I do is to apply a glaze of light blue. This is Peacock and Cobalt mixed because we want the white in this composition to be on the bird. And we're ready to paint the bird. I'm going to start with the eye. This is a mix of uh, cobalt blue with a tiny bit of lamp black. And I'm just outlining the actual iris of the eye with one of my small brushes. This is a number two round. Fill that in, that's iris color, leaving a dot of white for a sparkle of highlight. Next, I've mixed up a little bit of light purple, opera, and uh, some of the uh, cobalt blue. And I'm just outlining, uh, saving a little edge of uh, white on the immediate outside of the iris. Moving into the beak, I've got uh, some of that stronger blue cobalt with a touch of, of lamp black. I'm going to paint in a base on the beak, leaving a white snippet of highlight across the top of the beak. This is base. This will get another application. Moving in on the face, there is some white on the face of a blue jay, but in truth, very few whites are really white, so I'm dropping in a little purple, putting uh, that purple in with little feathery strokes. And now I'm also giving myself a boundary of purple on his crest. So I save that outside white edge. 
and switching to peacock blue, I'm beginning to develop the blue crest on the top of the blue jay's head. And continuing with that peacock blue, just keep moving it on down into the body of the bird. I'm now applying a base of peacock I'm charging in some cobalt blue against the back side of the bird to give him roundness and dimension. And continuing with the lighter blue down the back side and into the tail. Coming back to the face to finish up some detail, use lamp black and outline the iris of the eye and add a pupil. Next you'll want to add some lamp black on both the top and bottom portions of the beak. The bottom portion of the beak is largely lamp black. Save a little sliver of light. And add a smaller wedge of lamp black on the top portion of the beak. We'll soften this a bit later. Mix up a bit of opera with a touch of your new gamboge to add a cheek patch that will glow underneath some of the uh, black markings that we'll add and start adding in the black feathery detail markings on uh, the J's face. Just follow your pencil lines, your graphite lines. I'm using lamp black to add this uh, cheek detail in feathery strokes. It runs basically from underneath the bird's beak all the way up to underneath his crest. And you're going to create the darkest black at the base on the chest. And also underneath this crest, leave some of the pink peeking through. I'm 
also strengthening some of the, the blue on the crest at the uh, far right hand side. You can take a damp brush, this is my number four round, and just smear, gently smear and soften the hard edges that were created when you added the lamp black on the beak. This just makes a nice soft finish and the beak's done. Soften through the feathery detail that you've put on the face and on the cheek. We want the bird to look soft. So this is just a bit of water on my brush. And I'm moving dried paint basically and softening. Go ahead and mix up a little bit of light purple. You can either use your peacock and opera or peacock with a touch of cobalt and opera. And uh, add some to the chest. We want the white left hand side of the chest to really glow. So we have to take the white away in other places. You can also work that purple down the underside of the tail. Also strengthen the cobalt blue down the right hand side of the bird's back. Moving into some of the detail on the bird's wings and tail, go ahead and cover some of the graphite lines that you see with cobalt blue. You're just painting over some of those lines. The fact that we have a base of uh, peacock down will help them glow. But you're following along. The tail is broken into two of feathers that are resting one on top of another. Requires a little bit of outlining here with cobalt. I'm just continuing to strengthen some of the uh, wing and tail detail with the cobalt. Softening. And now it's time to move into some of the darkest detail on the wing with lamp black. Above and below uh, the white areas uh, of feathers that are saved. And adding that black detail down on the tail feathers as well. Those striking markings that Blue Jays have. If you're so lucky to find one of their feathers. <laughs> Thank you.
And a little more detail into the wing. Again, this is lamp black and I'm using my number four round. Use the biggest brush for the job that you're comfortable with. You'll paint faster. And now, I see that uh, a portion of the, uh, the body of the Blue Jay needs to be strengthened in value. So I've made a mix of cobalt blue with lamp black, and I'm putting some of the darkest blues on into the wing area as well. Some of the light areas really stand out. Just building those darker values on the bird to give him more dimension. And then softening with a damp brush. We want him to look soft and fluffy. In the white areas on the wings, uh, very few whites are white, so I'm applying just a little bit of soft purple to knock that bright white down. The only pure white of the paper that's left is on the bird and on some of the very outside fringes of the branches and barbed wire. the home stretch here. Just a little more uh, development underneath the wing with some purple. We want that wing to look like it's resting on the side of the body. And also a little stronger purple into the uh, into the chest. We're ready to add the finishing touches. I use a product called Bleed Proof White and with a small brush, a little bit of water, you can add some very soft feathery detail uh, on the outside edges of the bird. I'm going to go down the chest. across the crest and even across the top of the beak. Then add a little fluff where his belly overhangs the fence post. A couple touches on the tail and you're done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you'll click on the like button or leave a comment and please subscribe to my channel so you can watch more of my videos as they become available. Keep painting and stay inspired.